So it's my pleasure to welcome three local bird photographers, and they're each going to tell you a little bit about their story and, and share some photos and the stories behind those photos. So uh, we'll, we'll just go one to the other to the next. So Patrick will be first, and then Bob, and then Rebecca, and they're going to share their screens um, as they share their images. So you're welcome to um, add comments and chat. And then when we get to the end, keep note of what you might want to mention or uh, ask them about as well at the very end, and we'll have the mics on then. So thank you for being with us here tonight. And Patrick, do you want to start your screen share? Sure. I was walking on top of the landfill, like I do every day with, the, uh, with my dog, and or most days. And the snow bunting came out stretched his legs, stretched his wings, and then he stretched out his tail. <laughs> He's very cooperative. And here, the places I usually walk are along uh, Croton Dam on the uh, Croton Lake Road. And one day, this guy was uh, hanging out, singing his heart out. And also, this is also back in Croton, the, uh, the dam, this, this Bob Link. I've been so lucky with the last couple of uh, years, my backyard, uh, a flock of flock of uh, cedar waxwings show up, and this guy this guy was uh, until I saw it, I thought it was discoloration. Then I looked it up, and no, depending on what they eat, they can come out like that. Here's some other pictures I got of the uh, that same flock. So these were all in my backyard uh, in the holly tree. I caught him chirping. I looked over a bush, and this guy was, he had caught a mouse or something, so he was quite cooperative. He let me take all the pictures I want, as long as I didn't bother him eating his mouse. That's the harrier, one of the female harrier that, uh, of course, everybody's got a picture of. This one, and this one, this is not a great picture, but uh, there's actually four birds here. Here's, a, here's another one here that I couldn't get. I was actually walking along uh, the road near Croton Reservoir. Out of the corner of my eyes, I saw some birds making a fuss, flocking around. I thought they were crows. I said, let me check it out. And of course, I went stumbling into the, uh, the trees with my dog, and I got one picture off before I scared them. The best uh, way to find really unusual birds is if you're walking along and you see a bunch of birders that really know what they're doing uh, and go over and ask them what they're looking at it's likely you're going to get something nice so um yeah i'm i'm um in hawthorne in the middle of right around the middle of uh, westchester county and uh my interest in birding i guess over the years i've gone to things like the eagle fests and things like that but really Things really took off for me um, a couple of years ago. Again, same story as Patrick during the you know the pandemic. Um, the camera I have now is my first real camera. Like until a few years back, I was a point and click kind of guy. <laughs> and a little bit over a year ago, I got a, a good lens. It sounds like a Patrick's you know stole my story from me before uh, I got a chance to say it because it's we're, we're kind of in the, in the same uh, boat there yeah, but um, anyway this this guy belted kingfisher apparently it's the uh, American Birding Association's bird of the year for 2023 um, these shots were taken earlier this month the location uh, may be a little bit taboo um, Let's just say that this bird was near Jimmy Cagney and Babe Ruth, if, uh, if that means anything to you. Um, I, yeah, and I don't know if birding in cemeteries is a, sort of a no-no, but that, that's where this guy was. Um, and uh, you know, go on to the next guy. Uh, yeah, last winter was a pretty good one for the Eagles, and got some nice pictures from Verplank all the way down to Rockwood Hall, and this particular one was at George's Island. And uh, one of the things that makes it memorable for me was the bird was kind of on some ice in the middle of the Hudson and took off and flew towards us and landed on a tree there and we got some nice shots. And there was a photographer there who was from somewhere down south, Arkansas or Alabama or something like that. And he started weeping. <laughs> 
he said, we don't have eagles like this near me. And I've been here all morning loving this. And I was just about to pack up and leave. And I said, let me give it another half hour. And then that happened. So it was kind of a cool thing just to experience, uh, you know, someone else having some joy in the birding, uh, bird watching stuff and photography. Uh, this guy, a pileated woodpecker, this was in May, um, Rockefeller State Park. I was, I think I was in there chasing the redheaded woodpecker. And uh, again, a couple of people, <laughs> uh, the, the person, the per personal touch of uh, some of these things, a couple of people came up to me and said, hey, there's a pileated right by the path, you know, and uh, doesn't seem to care that people are walking by it. So I went over and took a few snaps and uh, this one's the one I'd like the best because of the lighting of it. And then this guy, the Baltimore Oriole, was, again, right in that same area. It was also in, um, in May. And um, it was near the office, uh, the courtyard up there. And I, I've gotten a couple of good Oriole shots around Swan Lake and stuff, but the birds were higher up in the tree. This guy was down a bit, so I was able to get, you know, some nice contrast with the, uh, the orange and the, the black side of things. So I, I kind of like this one. Let's see. All right, this is a Northern Harrier. This was in January of last year. Um, so like a year and four days ago, to be precise. Um, I was still kind of learning how to work my lens and taking a lot of horrible pictures. And uh, this, this bird was at, um, at Croton Point. And, kiting and looking for something to eat. And I just stayed in the car on the road. I apologize to anyone who had to pass me. <laughs> and I took a few, few photos and uh, it, was, it was a nice experience. So um, a couple of red tailed hawks. This was uh, from one of your walks and at, also at Croton Point, right around the same spot. Um, I don't know the relationship between these two birds, but when I've shown this picture to some friends and family members, I've gotten a few comments. It's like, they look like a, a married couple who are having a disagreement. Uh, it's just, this guy's American Red Star. I took this picture at Rockefeller State Park over uh, by the Sleepy Hollow Road entrance near that little bridge over the Canico River. And I actually invested a lot of time with this bird because um, I, don't know, I was there trying to get a lot of pictures of the bird. I ended up getting two or three that were actually kind of nice and probably a couple of hundred pictures of uh, branches that the bird had been on a few seconds before or a half a second before I stopped the picture. So, um, you know, it's uh, living up to its warbler uh, tendencies. So. Um, and speaking of warblers, a uh, magnolia warbler, this was in the same part of the park, also the same month in May, um, and it was down the river a bit, and uh, kind of like the, the it, it just is kind of a spectacular bird to me, <laughs> just to, um, and it, it kind of looks uh, pretty nice, I think, against the green background, background so. Let's see. Oh, this guy was a red-tailed hawk. This was... Um, Oh, one of um, the, the uh, Southern River Audubon walks in November, actually when Anne was in South Africa, this is the one of the walks that Larry led us on. And um, I kind of, right after the walk ended, there were a couple of these uh, red tail talks who were kiting and then kind of dive bombing toward the field and pulling up. I guess they didn't end up grabbing anything, but in this shot, it almost seemed like the bird was looking at me. <laughs> Maybe it's my, just my imagination, but um, kind of just find this to be an interesting shot. All right, this one, a black cat, cat chickadee. Uh, this was October in Mariondale. Uh, somebody's probably going to ask me what kind of plant that thing's on, but and I don't know. And that's just something I'll have to learn <laughs> in the future. Uh, all the trees and the plants and stuff. But um, this, uh, it was about, 
I guess about 10 or 15 minutes before sunset. And I just kind of thought the lighting on this shot was pretty, pretty nice. Um, okay, this was um, in September over at Austin, near the old uh, Black Crown Night Herring hangout. And uh, got a few pictures of the adults, and I just kind of found the juvenile ones that look a little, little interesting. Um, just kind of like this one. Addison Osprey over at uh, Edith Reed. This was on December 28th. And actually, I think it's uh, last I looked, it was the last recorded uh, sighting of one or an entry one on eBird for Westchester County. So until they come back, uh, this shot will have to do. This one was taken last week, or actually a couple of pictures in there, but a couple of um, long tailed ducks. And um, Seeing a few of these birds through, you know, the bins or scope or something pretty far out. This was over at Hudson Park over in New Rochelle. They, they were pretty close, and I got a couple of nice shots, and they didn't seem to care that I was there, which I kind of appreciated. Common bird, uh, American robin, but I just like this picture with colors and everything. It's, uh, it's nice to uh, appreciate things close, close to home. Um, couple of goldfinches. I was going to ask a trick question about these, like what's the difference between these two birds? And the answer, the trick answer was going to be the one on the left was taken in my backyard and the one on the right was taken in my front yard. But, um, and uh, let's see, those, the, the uh, goldfinches, uh, the one on the left was an April shot and the one on the right was in July. And I will close with this. The most common bird I get around my yard is the uh, house finch. And this one happens to be uh, my wife's favorite picture, so that's why it's on, on the slideshow. And I thank her for putting up with me uh, you know, my birding activities. And also thanks to Anne and all of you for uh, helping people along the way. Appreciate everything you guys do to, to help us learn. Thank you. All right. Um, for those who don't already know me, I'm Rebecca Bell. Um, I did have the privilege of doing uh, a similar presentation to this a couple of years ago on a bird chat. So this is my second time doing this, but I promise all new and improved content. <laughs> um, and um, there's my website. I'm, I mainly post my pictures on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, you're welcome to follow my page at Briarcliff Photography if you want to see these pictures and more. A little bit about me. Um, as you can probably tell from my accent, I am originally from the UK, um, but I have lived in the USA. This will be 23 years in a couple of months, so most of my adult life. Um, but I haven't always been into birding. In fact, um, that was something that I only uh, discovered uh, when I moved to Westchester. Um, specifically, I live in Bradcliffe Manor, New York. Um, in 2016 and actually it came up in my memories on Facebook this week six years ago this week was my first Audubon bird walk led by Anne so that was when I met some of you guys for the first time and um, just started to learn a little bit more about birds and ID and and get really into it so um, I uh, I use a Canon PowerShot SX70 camera, which is, I think, what you guys call a bridge camera. So I do not have all the interchangeable lenses. I um, It has a built-in, you know, it's all in one, um, but has a very good zoom, a 65 times zoom. I did upgrade uh, in the last year when I did my previous presentation. I was using a Panasonic Lumix camera. So this is a slight upgrade from that, um, but I'm liking it a lot. Um, I like that it's not super heavy, it's easy to carry around, um, but it seems to do a good, good job doing what I need it to do. Um, I will always add the caveat that I am not the person to ask if you have technical questions about cameras, settings, apertures, and that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, I do not have any formal photography training. Uh, but what I do have is patience, a good eye, and a genuine desire to educate and inform people by sharing photos of wildlife in our area. 
And what I'm going to do now is share a selection of my favorite images that I've taken in 2022. So these are all from last year and I've done them in chronological order. So I'm basically taking you through my year of birding, the highlights of it. And um, as well as each species, I'm going to tell you where I took them. And I'm hoping that I might be able to introduce you to a couple of new ideas of places that you could go birding in the tri-state area. A um, couple that haven't already been mentioned I do have my favorites and, and many of them are the same as your favorites, um, but I will uh, try and make sure you, I tell you where things were taken. Uh, so this is obviously a red-tailed hawk and this was taken at Rockefeller uh, State Park uh, on March the 5th. And um, Rockefeller State Park is the closest natural area to where I live. So it is where I most commonly walk, particularly if I'm short on time. I watched this hawk as it flew down from a branch, caught a vole, and then carried it back to this tree where it proceeded to dismember and eat this vole. And some people might find this photo and the next one a bit gruesome because obviously it's really showing it going to town here eating this creature. But... I just think it's all part of the circle of life and it was really fascinating to watch this whole process um, you know, up close. The hawk didn't seem bothered by my presence. I think it was more interested in getting a good meal. And so I actually like that you can kind of see some of the detail of what's going on. It's not a sanitized picture, but it's keeping it real, which is what I like to do. And then... Um, after it had finished eating, I managed to get this close-up shot of the bird's talons with blood on them. And again, I feel like that's kind of like the real, the real story. These are birds of prey. This is what they do. <laughs> They're not there to look pretty for us. They're uh, in their survival mode. <laughs> so it's just a, a nice close-up shot that I like. Then we move on to April. This is still in Rockefeller State Park at Swan Lake. And this was on April 10th. And it's a pair of double crested cormorants. Uh, those of you who are familiar with Swan Lake probably know there's a sort of uh, area of some dead logs that are kind of near the edge of the, the lake. And that's where these cormorants tend to hang out and dry their wings. Um, there's a couple of reasons I love this picture. One is that you can actually see the double crests on the bird on the right. So often when you take pictures of cormorants, you can't actually see the crests, but you can quite clearly on this one. And then I also just love trying to capture something of a bird's personality in the pictures that I take. And I feel like this picture does that particularly well. I, uh, I felt like this almost needed a caption competition and uh, I was going to put something like, uh, excuse me, do you mind? You're interrupting our date. <laughs> it looks quite indignant. <laughs> so um, I thought that was a, a funny one. <laughs> uh, still in April. This is a picture of an osprey. And um, this was taken on April 17th, which was Easter Sunday. And this is in Constitution Park in Larchmont, New York. Um, so I don't know how many of you are familiar with Larchmont, but um, right on the main sort of drag there, there's a police station and in, there's a cell phone tower right next to the police station in this park and the Ospreys nest on top of it. And um, the church that we attend is very nearby. And so... I've learned to just try and have my camera with me on a Sunday morning. And if I get a few minutes, I will wander across the road to the park and just see if I can see the Ospreys doing anything interesting. And uh, this was on Easter morning and I found this Osprey who enjoying a fish. You can see uh, it's caught a fish and it's devouring it. And I took this picture and then a few seconds later, this bird projectile pooped in my direction <laughs> narrowly missing me in my nice easter outfit <laughs> by a matter of inches <laughs> so um that was a memorable a memorable day <laughs> uh, 
Now, the next picture. This is one of my favorites from last year. And um, this is also from a new place that I discovered in 2022 that has rapidly become a favorite place. It's a little further afield. Um, and this is uh, the rookery that is on the way to Ocean City, New Jersey. So if you go down to the Jersey Shore, it's about a two hour, 45 minute ride from here. As you cross the bridge, into Ocean City, New Jersey. There's a visitor center that they built on the right hand side on the bridge, but they managed to do a phenomenal job preserving this natural rookery at the side of the road, plenty of parking and just a phenomenal site. There must have been 50 pairs of egrets nesting and doing their various mating rituals. There were also every kind of heron there were ibis there were just incredible variety of birds i mean i was probably there two hours could have stayed two more it was just phenomenal sight and this was at the very end of april um i'm hoping to go back there this year at that same time because it was just something to behold and um i had i've taken plenty of pictures here of great egrets but i have never seen one before doing this whole display thing a bit like a peacock with the the fan tail and it was also kind of doing this neck bobbing thing sort of jutting its neck out it's a very interesting display to watch and i just uh, i just love that i managed to capture that this is another picture that i got that same day so april 29th at the rookery in ocean city new jersey and this is a yellow crowned night heron. This was my first time photographing one of these. Um, I usually set a resolution every year that is birding related. And last year it was to photograph 22 new to me species. And so this was one of my 22 in 22, a yellow crowned night heron. This is a Northern shoveler duck. And um, if you're going down to Ocean City, um, the other place that I highly, highly recommend is Forsyth uh, Wildlife Refuge in Galloway, New Jersey. It's about 25 minutes from Ocean City. And again, has rapidly become one of my favorite places to bird. Um, there's an eight mile wildlife drive. So you can basically bird from your car. You can occasionally pull over and take pictures, but it's, the most fantastic drive and you pretty much guaranteed to see something in every season. I was just there this past weekend and there was plenty of activity, particularly different kinds of ducks. Um, so just highly recommend Forsyth Wildlife Refuge if you're down that way. And um, I just particularly like this picture because of the way the sun is illuminating all the different colors on the Northern Shoveler. Um, just, just a nice angle, I think, and the, and the lighting in the eye. The next one may be my favorite picture of 2022. Uh, I know that Canada geese are very common and sometimes considered annoying and aggressive, but I personally cannot resist the cuteness of the goslings and, um, I captured this one taking a nap under its parents' wing. Uh, this was on the banks of Swan Lake at Rockefeller State Park. Uh, but even more special was that I actually got this picture on Mother's Day. And uh, I've actually made it into a card. And uh, I feel like it's a great card for Mother's Day or for a mum with a new baby. Um, just sort of captures some of that parental tenderness uh, in, a, in a picture. And it's amazing how many people just glance at this picture and just see the mother, mother goose and don't even notice the gosling until I point it out. <laughs> when you notice, it's very cute. <laughs> um, this is an indigo bunting. And again, this was at Rockefeller State Park um, on May 18th last year. Um, this was just a great example of the Merlin bird app being really useful because they have this sound ID feature. And so I heard this call that I didn't recognize 
Merlin told me it was an indigo bunting and I thought, aha, that is a bird that I have yet to get a decent photo of. And so I followed the sound and uh, just waited until it came down low enough from the tree canopy that I could get a decent photo. And um, I just like, again, the lighting on this one and just, uh, just a nice shot. Uh, we're skipping a couple of months now and going to August 1st. This is obviously a um, male goldfinch. And um, I just like the color contrast in this picture between the, the bright yellow of the bird and I believe the purple flowers are called salvia. Somebody more knowledgeable in flowers can correct me if I'm wrong, but I just liked that color contrast. And they must be very tasty as well because the goldfinch were just going nuts eating, eating these flowers. Um, and this was taken in the grounds of Lindhurst Mansion in Tarrytown. So just putting that on your radar um, if it's not somewhere that you've been birding before. Um, if you want to go in the grounds but not actually tour the mansion, you can get a grounds only pass for your car for $10 per vehicle. So you can go in any day between April and December and bird there. Um, it's right on the river, but it's also got extensive grounds and, and gardens. Or you can access it on foot from the old Croton Aqueduct uh, Trail or the Westchester River Walk for free. So uh, if you, you haven't birded there, you might want to add that to your list of places to check out. It's nicely looked after and I've had quite good luck there. Uh, this is next one is a bit later in August. This is a green heron. And this might be another new to you location. This is uh, just across the border into Connecticut. This is taken at Bruce Park in Greenwich, Connecticut. Uh, it's just off I-95 between exits three and four. Uh, there's plentiful free parking there and a really nicely laid out uh, park lots of different ponds and water areas with walking trails between them and um, again I've had great luck being a few times now and just had good luck finding different birds there and uh, liked this shot of the green heron just you can see some of the different colors underneath and uh, just the way it was posed on that branch thought was pleasing so yeah Bruce Park in Connecticut and then we're going to jump on to October and another, probably my second favorite place other than Rockefeller to bird is T-Town. I'm sure most of you are familiar with T-Town in Ossining. Um, one of the best things I did during COVID was sign up to be a member of T-Town um, because it just gives you access to all the trails and parking for free if you're a member, with, otherwise you have to pay. And uh, you get obviously on their email list and learn about their guided walks. And um, I actually went on a walk with Charlie Roberto at T-Town, uh, I think earlier in October, and he showed us some locations that were sort of more off the beaten track, not just the trail around the lake that everybody does. And uh, I just uh, have discovered more and more areas of T-Town that I really like. And this was on uh, the main lake. Um, but I just love how the, the leaves are reflecting in the water and making it look red. It just looks like they're swimming in blood almost. Um, but also the, the crispness of the, the colors and the reflection. I just think this is quite a, a pleasing picture. And it was a, it was a good day for photos because the next photo is from that same day. And I also have to thank Charlie Roberto for this shot because, uh, when I had gone on the guided walk with him, he had shown us which branches the kingfishers like to hang out on. Um, and this is just west of the access gate to Wildflower Island, if you guys are familiar with T-Town. So that's the area to look at if you like kingfishers. And um, so I went back to that spot on my own a few weeks later and lo and behold, the kingfisher was perched exactly where Charlie said it would be. <laughs> <laughs> and this time with the pretty backdrop of the full leaves it just again is a, just a pleasing visual contrast I think with the colors this was October 26 and then 
my last sort of new place that I discovered for, for the first time last year. Well, this is a photo that I took there of a purple finch, um, which was a nice treat. We all see the house finches in our backyards um, more frequently, but the purple finches are a little rarer. Um, the description I've most commonly heard of them is they look like they've been dipped in raspberry jam. And uh, this location that you may not be familiar with, it's um, about 45 minutes west of us if you cross the Mario Cuomo Bridge and go into the very northern part of New Jersey. Um, this is a place called the Celery Farm in Allendale, New Jersey. And um, I discovered it because I actually had a photo selected to be in an exhibit in Ridgewood, New Jersey, and I had to go drop off and pick up the photo at the beginning and end of October. So I combined it with a walk at both ends <laughs> and I just love this trail because it's um well marked trail around a lake and they've erected a few um sort of wooden towers that are vantage points so you can get a nice view of the lake and see a bit further afield and there's a small parking lot that can hold about six cars um but it's quiet and um I've just had such good luck there finding uh, just great pictures of wildlife and deer as well. I mean, the deer are just completely unfazed by humans at this place. I mean, I've had a baby fawn come within a few feet of me, just completely fearless. Um, so uh, that's a nice place. Now, if, I'm, if I've got reason to go across the bridge, I'll try and fit in a walk there. Again, Celery Farm in Allendale, New Jersey. And the final shot, I'm sure many of you are familiar with this place, but this was a picture of a peregrine falcon that I took at the state line lookout in Alpine, New Jersey. So that's right on the line between New York and New Jersey, just across the bridge. And they have some pretty much resident peregrine falcons that live there, I think, and seem Again, very unfazed by the presence of humans, probably. There's the running joke, they must be the most photographed falcons in the northeast of the US because everybody seems to know they live there and don't mind being photographed. But I thought this was a nice shot again with the way you can see the light hitting it and the feathers splaying out. and Just, just some nice personality in that picture. And just finally, I thought I could share um, a few resources that I use. If any of you are also bird photographers and you're interested in getting prints or note cards made, um, I find for prints, I typically use Shutterfly. They're great quality and you can often find a 50% off coupon floating around. They come back in about a week. Uh, for note cards, I'm very happy with Vista print. They're very affordable and pretty good quality. I'm on my fourth set of note cards that I've had made by them. And uh, if Anne said I could uh, advertise, so if anybody's interested in note cards, I do sell them. Um, they're $3 each or $15 for a set of six. And uh, that's my latest set. And that has five of the pictures that I showed tonight as note cards. And if anybody wants to reach me, you can email me at Rebecca at BriarcliffPhotography.com. Or as I said at the beginning, you can find me on Facebook, my Briarcliff Photography Facebook page.